This is Son of S60, a smart plug, and I damaged it for you so you don't have to. Okay, we can start the video. Hey guys, I usually get a decent heads up when there is a new product from IT. They send it over to me, I get to play it, and let you know just before the release date. Now, this thing has been on the market since probably December. They've sent me a big box over the Christmas as a gift because I'm <laughs> influencer. And that was one of the items inside. I wasn't aware that there is a new socket. I knew that Sonoff had smart sockets before. But this one is different, different on a couple of accounts. First of all, it has power metering, which previous socket didn't have unless you were picking S. 31, which was for US, but European and UK people had access to S, I think, 26, which had slightly odd shape, and I didn't really like that shape. So when I looked up a 60 smart socket and find out that it has a reasonable footprint and it's cheaper than $11, I got really excited because honestly, it's peanuts money for all the features that this socket can offer to you. As you probably guessed it, this is ESP32 based smart socket which connects to your Wi-Fi 2.4 GHz to be precise. You know, like with all some of devices. I have the UK version, but actually this comes in two different variants, one for European or similar customers and one for the UK, the one I hold in hand. Apart from controlling your outlet, it comes with power metering, allowing you to harvest the information, store it on a Ewlink cloud and access your power consumption data. You'll be able to see how much power and current your electricity is using, what is the current voltage and access historical data via your app. On top of that, we also have various protection functions that you can pick either power, current or voltage of the protections that will disable the wherever is connected and keep your devices as safe. Just bear in mind, this is a software protection, so it's not as quick as breakers and it's a good practice to have proper breakers in place. And speaking of safety in breakers, this is rated for 13 amps at 250 volts. So bear that in mind when connecting appliances through Sonoff S60 plug. Essentially, this is a smart relay. And if you've never played with Sonoff items before, well, let me give you a quick rundown. It pairs via Bluetooth, which assures really quick and swift pairing. And after that, you're greeted with the plug interface, to which you have a button to turn it on and on, and standard set of e-willing options, including timers, and schedules, and a couple of extra options in the settings menu. Those would be options like a default power on setting, inching, and obviously access to thresholdings, all the uh, safety features that I've talked about it just a second ago. If you want to venture outside of eWilink application, eWilink also offers skills for your voice assistant, so you'll have no problem connecting this to Google Home or Alexa ecosystem. Because this socket comes with a button that you can use to manually turn the outlet on and on, uh, there is a one hint for you. If you're going to use, uh, for example, over voltage or over current protection, and it will trigger uh, disabling the relay inside, the button won't work anymore until you access the app, confirm that you are happy with it, and then you'll be able to restore the functionality of the button. It's a nice, neat safety feature just in case, you know, something will trip, the power socket will disable whatever was connected to it. And without knowing this, you'll just try to reset the socket state again. This isn't my first son of device with power measurements. So um, if you go to power measurement page, you'll have instant access to real-time data, which will provide you your current usage uh, of power and current and also current voltage. And you'll be able to compare that with today's consumption, this month's consumption and yesterday's consumption. Now, if you require historical data, you have an access to up to six months of data stored in Ewlink Cloud. There are some caveats with this because all the data that are being stored historically, despite having access to real-time data, is aggregated, which means 
uh, whatever power consumption you've got over the hour, it's going to be um, averaged and stored as a single data point. And that's going to be your minimum frequency. So if you want to know what actually happened within an hour, you have very little ways of checking that other than just staring at the real time data streaming from the socket, which is updated every couple of seconds. If you're running into a six month cutoff and you want to preserve some of the data, you can use also an export button, which will download CSV file and let you preserve that data, which is nice and handy. I only regret that there isn't any um, automatic way of doing that on the interval of time and you'll have to go through the process manually. Here's the thing, if you're already on Ewelink ecosystem and you have that hooked up to your Alexa or Google Home via uh, skills and you're happy with it and you're happy with the local LAN connectivity because this one supports this too, this is a brilliant device at brilliant price point. Now with the only disadvantage being that historical data is kept at one hour averaged uh, intervals. So what are your options if you want to improve on that? Obviously in the past I would take a device and flash it and that would allow me to have it as mortar, send uh, real-time data to my private database and store it this way with any granularity I need for the task at hand. Unfortunately, this is not possible without flashing. So I thought I'm going to take a peek inside and see what can we do about it and how easy it is to flash this with task mortar. So my first problem and the obstacle was that the case is actually glued in in place, which isn't common for some of the devices. They're usually quite easy to open, but not this product. I had to work my way around the perimeter of the case to kind of cut the glue and pull it out, in which I didn't as much as damage case for it, but I definitely left some marks on it. I will be able to reseal it later and use the super glue or something similar to keep everything intact. But once I opened it, I came to a problem number two. Inside the ESP32 is mounted on the daughter board. It's not something I haven't seen before, so I was kind of expecting that to be the case. And usually when that is the case, I can solder my wire for flashing to the joint connector that connects double PCBs inside. However, there is a problem with that because Without further desoldering, I cannot disconnect the main PCB from the piece of plastic and prongs of the socket, and I cannot access these um, joints in any different way. Which means in order to even attempt flashing this device, I would have to remove two beefy joints that hold the prongs in place, because the prongs are affixed to um, enclosure with I don't know, they, I think they're heat pressed or something like that. So while it's not impossible to flash this with Tasmota, I think I understand why four months after the release of this device, we don't see any templates for this, uh, because it's actually a bit of work to get in there, desolder the main board and then start flashing it with Tasmota. So here's the question, should I really attempt to do it? If there was any easy way of doing this, because this doesn't support uh, some of the DIY mode either, so I cannot just upload the uh, flat or well, different firmware via OTA, uh, then I probably would try to flash the Tasmota and poke about until I figure out what, which configuration actually works for this device. However, with this being mm, it's not difficult to perform, but it's harder to perform than your usual flash of some of the devices. I don't know if there is a point of doing that, especially that you can find something on the market that it might be slightly um, more expensive, but easier to use, especially when it comes to flashing uh, Tasmoda firmware. So I'm raising my hand and recommending this plug to you if you're looking for a plug that works with Ewelink and it won't break your bank because honestly, for the features that it offers, it's a really good choice. However, if you were planning on flashing this and making it yours and integrating with something like Home Assistant or Tasmota directly rather uh, than through uh, skill integration, then, um, well, you're gonna have some problems. Okay guys, if you watch my shorts, the Tech Drops shorts, you know that I have one more power metering device from Sonoff and it's kind of exciting. So um, that is the recommendation for you to subscribe to my channel and follow me on social media to find out when I'm going to release that. As for now, I do not have a posting schedule. You know how it works. You know how social media displayed below this 
beautiful frame work too so you can um, give me a wave in there if you fancy thanks so much for watching links to this are in the description and i'll see you in the next video take care bye so fucking loud So fucking loud. Right. Where was I? Oh, for fuck's sake, he's going back. If you're one of those dickheads that drive very loud vehicle at night, I despise you. He's going back again. Okay. Now we have a police. Jesus Christ. Okay.